Today we're looking at a new crystalline solar panel from Powerfilm Solar. It's the F348F28. This 160 watt panel from the Folding series offers some interesting advantages over the amorphous panels we normally see on the channel. It also comes in lighter and more rugged than other crystalline panels we see on the market today. If you stick with me, I'll tell you all about it. You are listening to the emergency broadcast systems. This station broadcasts emergency news and official information on the air for a sign there. I've been testing this 160 watt crystalline panel from Powerfilm for about half a year at the time this video was published. You've certainly seen it in my other videos, although I haven't placed very much emphasis on it. In this clip, you can see it next to the 60 watt folding panel I normally use to power my station, while the 160 watt crystalline panel is charging up my electric fat bike. Now don't get them mixed up, because the very first observation you should make is that the 160 watt crystalline panel is much smaller than the 60 watt amorphous panel I normally use when operating MAN Portable. Even if we compare it to the 120 watt amorphous panel I often use for the field station, you can see the 160 watt crystalline panel is even smaller than that. This means we can get a heck of a lot more power and a much smaller footprint in the field. This is also a big deal for getting them out in the field, as they pack flat and compact just like the Amorphous series. Now, although I'm generally stoked to talk about solar panels and amateur radio, let's start this discussion by telling you how I charge my electric fat bike with the 160 watt crystalline panel. Now, many of you have been around the channel for a while, so you already know that most of my MAM portable operations are done on a fat bike. The fat bike is an enabler. It can carry more gear and get me to my destinations faster than I could if I were hiking. Now, when the load is a little bit heavier or the distance to my destination is a little bit further, that electric fat bike motor certainly comes in handy. Now, very often my dog Snapper also comes along for the ride. Now, Snapper is a lot of things, but she's definitely not a spring chicken. So she rides along behind me in her special dog trailer while I'm riding the fat bike. Naturally, pulling Snapper along behind me uses an enormous amount of energy, either from my battery or when I'm not using the motor from calories expended from me. Now, I carry the 160 watt crystalline panel with me on the fat bike in a pannier everywhere we go. Now, because of the 160 watt crystalline panel, we're not limited in range by the amount of capacity in our battery. Since we're always carrying the 160, when we stop, we just throw it out on the sand or wherever we are to start charging the fat bike. In all honesty, since I've had the 160 watt crystalline panel, I haven't had to charge my electric fat bike from any grid tied source since then. In fact, the 160 watt crystalline is my primary power supply for the e-bike. With that said, let's take a quick look at how I actually charge the e-bike using this solar panel. Previously, I used two 60 watt folding panels and a Guinness on charge controller to charge up the fat bike. The two panels were connected in parallel, then connected directly to the Guinness on charge controller. The charge controller was connected directly to the battery and voila, we have instant off-grid e-bike charging. What I've done now is replace the two 60 watt panels with a single 160 watt panel, which is smaller and a lot more powerful. Moving on, let's go ahead and talk about the specs. So you already know it's a 160 watt panel. The operating voltage is 28.3 volts. This is important, but I'll tell you later in the video why. The output current is 5.7 amps, but keep in mind that's 5.7 amps at 28.3 volts. Regarding the dimensions, 12.5 inches long, 11 inches wide, one and a half inches thick, or in metric 317.5 millimeters, by 279.4 millimeters by 38.1 millimeters thick. 
Now, when it's unfolded, we're at 71 inches long, 24.7 inches wide, or 1,803.4 millimeters long, 614.7 millimeters wide. As far as the weight, 6.7 pounds, or exactly 3 kilos. And when we begin to compare the PowerFilm 160 watt crystalline panel with other panels from the folding series, we began to see the differences between these two technologies. The amorphous panels come in lighter, are flexible, but have a larger footprint when deployed. The crystalline panel has a much smaller footprint, but is much more efficient. The cost of that is being slightly heavier than the amorphous panels in the folding series. Even when we're comparing it to the massive 120 watt amorphous folding panel, which is 6.3 pounds or 2.9 kilos, the 160 watt folding crystalline panel comes in at 6.7 pounds or 3 kilos. So there's not a whole heck of a lot of extra weight to carry to get the extra power out of it. Now, when we start comparing the 160 watt power film crystalline panel to other crystalline panels on the market, we also find a pattern of the 160 watt crystalline from PowerFilm being lighter but generating more power than these other panels. So for example, the Gold Zero Nomad 100, it's putting out 5.56 amps at 18 volts for a total of 100 watts. The kicker is the total weight of the panel is 10.2 pounds or 4.6 kilos. With the off-grid Trek OGT120 120 watt panel, we're putting out 6.1 amps at 19.8 volts for a total of 120 watts. The weight of the panel is 7.9 pounds or 3.6 kilos. The next one on my list is from Bioino Power. It's a 100 watt panel putting out 5.56 amps at 18 volts. Total weight is 10 pounds or 4.54 kilos. I believe the takeaway here is the power to weight ratio. The Power Film Crystalline series delivers more wattage while having the smallest size and lowest weight of all the popular panels I've compared it to. In fact, if there is a panel on the market which exceeds the power rating, size, and weight of the Power Film Crystalline series, I haven't been able to find one. This will definitely have implications on the way I generate my power while operating portable. Where I used to deploy a 100 or 120 watt amorphous panel, now I have the luxury of deploying a 160 watt panel without increasing the weight. As we think about it, ounces are pounds and pounds are pain. When we're trying to deploy a fully capable field station for emergency communications, for preparedness, for a grid down scenario, there's no chance we're actually going to grab some extremely heavy solar panels, packing those man portable into the field. In practical terms, we simply can't manage the weight. Now there's another situation where we might use a 160 watt crystalline panel from PowerFilm, and that's with a solar generator such as the EcoFlow Delta or Delta Max, even the river from EcoFlow. Many of these manufacturers of large inverter generators often offer rebranded versions of portable solar panels to keep these inverter generators topped up in the field. One has to ask though, if you're willing to invest in such a high quality solar generator, why wouldn't you feed that solar generator with a high quality solar panel? In practical terms, the PowerFilm 160 watt crystalline panel is a better match for these inverter solar generators than many of the solar panels they are offering themselves. The 160 watt crystalline has a smaller footprint, it's lighter in weight, it has higher current and voltage, which means your solar generator will charge much faster. And ultimately, because of the quality and ruggedness built into power film panels, it's going to be a better long term investment. I can imagine it won't be too long before you start seeing dual 160 watt crystalline panels deployed with the field station. It's certainly excellent having this capability for emergency communications and preparedness, but of course we hope and pray we never have to deploy such portable power assets for real in the field. 
So let's go ahead and finalize this video and end it on a happy note. I tested the 160 watt power film crystalline panel with the DIY solar generator I built and deployed in the last video. In that video, I talked about multi-rig, multi-operator stations for emergency communications, for preparedness, for contesting, or for any other situation where we need a high output solar generator with lightweight and efficient solar panels. In this last clip, I'm operating the ICOM IC705 with a Microsoft Surface Go tablet. I've got the 24 amp hour solar generator I built with dual Guinness on charge controllers and the PowerFilm 160 watt crystalline panel connected to one of those charge controllers. It was cloudy and overcast, an absolute miserable day. The only thing we were missing was the rain. Even so, I arrived with a full battery and I left with a full battery. So here's the bottom line. I've been testing this solar panel since about halfway through 2022. Now when I compare this to the amorphous panels I normally use on the channel, I can see the benefits. The crystalline panel comes in at a lower price point, but it also generates much more power at about the same weight or just a tad more. Now I know someone's going to contradict me and say, hey, I'm never going to buy a solar panel, which is more than a dollar and change per watt. But there's two points here about that statement. People who say that have never carried portable power on their back, man portable, and generally speaking, lightweight and reliable portable solar power is almost always more expensive than the solar panels we put on our homes. Let me know what you think. Do you see a specific use case where the 160 watt crystalline would be beneficial to your style of operating? Or perhaps you are part of some emergency response group looking to add portable power capabilities to your off-grid kit. If you're one of those people watching who understands the benefits of lightweight portable power, I'd love to hear from you. The only thing I ask is that you be polite. Alright guys, if you like what I'm doing, if you like the content I'm creating, please leave me a comment and or a thumbs up to let me know. And if it's not too much to ask, please share this video with someone or someplace where other operators might enjoy it. Rock and roll, guys. Thanks for watching. Ciao.